I was just like a lot of young brothers when I was in high school, you know, before, well, as a as a teenager, as a younger person, you know, I wasn't. I just, I was more interested in having fun. You know what I'm saying? Just having a good time. And then, but my father was kind of old school, and I know, but when I when I was graduating at 18 years old, it's like, all right, brother, good job. <laughs> Well, you know, I have a performance venue, and and so I could have something that happens anytime, you know. And we li- we're in New Orleans, and you know they got a lot of places where two o'clock is the cutoff time. But I could have I've had stuff that might cl- might end seven o'clock the next morning. <laughs> you, know, I got to tell you something, man. Um, I have, you know, it's easy to say, yeah, I own a club, and 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 to try to to be fly. And, and look like the boss or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? But the reality is that I have worked harder than I've ever worked in my life. There are people with a lot more money than us. Mm-hmm. And if you've got a lot of money, then you could, you could just hire a whole big crew. And, and, and there's a different process for you. There's a different way for you to get to the, to the finish line if you got money. Yes, sir. But if you like me, with, you ain't got a lot. You ain't starting with a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? You, you can't just... No hell no, man. <laughs> this is a, a working class, like, like black community. Like this is the hood, you understand what I'm saying? Like have I ever been broke? I'm gonna be honest with you, man. It, my, I have, for a lot of years, I lived with, with a very, very tight budget where funds were tight as hell. So that's the, that's the reality. But if you say like just ever completely broke, no, you know why? Because I have, I have not been unemployed since I've been 15 years old. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to get it. Like, I remember, get this, I graduated from college. Mm-hmm. And my ignorant ass, the first job I got, I was getting paid $26,000 a year, you know? But coming from the hood, I was like, I made it. <laughs> <laughs> Other people ain't paying your bills, you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I knew I had a college degree. I actually had a job, but I needed some extra funds. <laughs> and oh, so I, I just went out and got another job. Yes, sir. We open we open this club wow. now. The club's been open about 14 years now. Uh-huh. Um, we opened like 2010, early 2011, and um, still, I was just getting just getting done peeing in my pants. Yeah. <laughs> how many how many birthday parties you think? You oh, God, we do a lot, but this one of my childhood friends. So me and this family, it's really like my family. You know, the the girl in the white is her brother, okay. and so me and her the same age. Me and Tracy, oh, wow. and, her, and her brother's a year older than us. Okay. <laughs> Where are you from originally? Here. You from here originally? Yeah, man. I, I feel like I'm just learning about this culture myself. It's been so much. Hi, hi. Where are you from? I'm from Baltimore. Oh, fantastic, man. Yes, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Okay. Um, welcome to the show, the number one podcast on earth. As you can tell, we are not in a regular office. We are reporting live from you from the New Orleans, the Noya. And today we are, we are at Cafe Estabul with the one and only, the owner, Mr. Shark. Mr. Chuck Perkins, you heard me. I'm the P-Town Prince, 17 World Troubadour, Uptown Renaissance, man. You heard me. <laughs> Welcome to the show. I'm glad to have you. <laughs> Thank you, my brother. I'm, glad, I'm, I'm sorry to come to you on such a day's notice. Oh, it's all good, my brother. I'm glad you're here, man. Thank you for coming. Yes, sir. Um, this show is promoting, this show, a lot of my listeners are young entrepreneurs themselves. Mm-hmm. So I feel like they can, me, myself, can gain a lot from this conversation. Absolutely, brother. So let's start this conversation um, on where, 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 where your beginnings. Well, my beginnings, man, I'm actually from, um, I'm right here from New Orleans. And, uh, you know, I was just like a lot of young brothers when I was in high school, you know, before, well, as, a, as a teenager, as a younger person, you know, I wasn't, I, just, I was more interested in having fun, you know what I'm saying, just having a good time. And then, but my father was kind of old school, and I know, but when I, when I was graduating at 18 years old, it's like, all right, brother, good job, <laughs> good luck. Really? You know, that's how I felt, you know. So when I graduated, I was like, man, what in the hell am I going to do, you know? Mm-hmm. So I knew, like, growing up in New Orleans, very similar to Baltimore from what I saw on The Wire, that, like, just hanging out in the hood wasn't, like, where I needed to be to try to figure out what I was going to do with my life. So I actually joined the Marine Corps and I was there for three years just because I needed some time to think about fresh out of high school. It's fresh out of high school. I needed some time to get serious about life and think about what I was going to do. So I went there and I came back and I went to Xavier University. I graduated from Xavier, 
uh, with a business major, and I ended up working for Kraft Foods, and I did that for like 10 years, and then I worked for a pharmaceutical company. Oh, wow. And so I actually uh, I had a friend who was a Turkish cat. That's the name of this club, Cafe Istanbul. And he had a place called Cafe Istanbul on Frenchman Street from 90 to 96. Okay. And the people who developed this entire complex asked him if he wanted to to open up another club and he said yes wow. and then he asked me if I wanted to be partners with him wow. and I said yes because at the time I had a I had a band I was performing because I'm a poet I was performing and I was doing stuff and saw my former business partner he I'm sure he said well listen I can handle the business side and then Chuck could he could book the shows and stuff like that that was the original I guess idea you know and I and I said yes and uh, you know, and then we open we open this club. Wow. Now, we the club's been open about fourteen years now. Uh -huh. um, we opened like two thousand ten, early two thousand eleven, and um, I, still, I was just getting just getting done peeing in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I, but I brought my business partner out about six years ago, mm -hmm. six seven years ago, and unfortunately for him, he was like in his sixties. He passed away. Like maybe three or four months ago, you know. The um, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Well, the guy w who was my partner here, okay. he was my partner here as well, and he passed away. But um, you know, I got to tell you something, man. Um, I have, you know, it's easy to say, yeah, I own a club, and 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 to try to to be fly and and look like the boss or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? But the reality is that I have worked harder than I've ever worked in my life. Now, because I don't, I ain't, I don't mind. I put put out the garbage, my floors, do whatever. But when you do that stuff for yourself, for me, it's okay, you know. Okay. Maybe if I still, if I, if, if damn near sixty, if I still had to do that for someone else, you know, it, it, it would be a lot more difficult yeah. for me, you know. But working on for myself, I, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't mind, you know. But mm -hmm. but that's the thing. If if you want to do something like this, mm -hmm. but you you really trying to do it because you want to. You you want access to women, or you want to be cool, or you want you want cast to be like that's the man right there, right? Then you ain't gonna be in business that long. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? See, for me, I put all that shit aside, and 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 whatever is required to do, mm -hmm. I'm I'm willing to I'm willing to do that. Okay. And that's that's the attitude you gotta have to, especially I'm gonna tell you something. There are people with a lot more money than us, mm -hmm. and if you got a lot of money, then you could. You could just hire a whole big crew, and, and and there's a different process for you. There's a different way for you to get to the to the finish line if you got money. Yes, sir. But if you like me, with you ain't got a lot. You ain't starting with a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? You, you can't. Do, no hell no, man. <laughs> this is a, a working class like like black community, like this is the hood. You understand what I'm saying? Understand, sir. Right. And so no, I ain't I ain't I ain't come from a lot of money. No. Okay. Have you ever been? I mean, of course you say you haven't. Um, you, 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 of course you say you haven't come from a lot of money. Have you ever been broke before after starting getting into your money your own businesses? I mean, like, have I ever been broke? I'm gonna be honest with you, man. It, my, I have for a lot of years. I lived with with a very, very tight budget where funds were tight as hell. What? So that's the that's the reality. But if you say like just ever completely broke, no. You know why? Because I have. I have not been unemployed since I've been 15 years old. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to get it. Like, I remember, get this, I graduated from college. Mm -hmm. In my ignorant ass, the first job I got, I was getting paid $26,000 a year, you know? But coming from the hood, I was like, Psh, I made it. <laughs> and then I looked at my first check, it was like, uh, I didn't. <laughs> and so I needed another job, man. I was living in Chicago at the time. And, and, and I had got a little apartment because my wife came up and we had a baby on the way. Mm -hmm. And we were living in this, this suburb right north of Chicago. And I just went w walking around looking for another job. I went one place, a little walking restaurant. Around, around. Yeah, man. I went in one restaurant and they said, well, what do you want to do? I said, I don't care. Whatever. I wash dishes, do whatever. I need. So I had a college degree. I had a job that came with that. Uh -huh. But I needed another job, so I always had that attitude. Yeah, you made it in business, right? I made it in business. Okay. So, but with the point, the point I'm trying to make, like always, like thinking, like I gotta worry about the Joneses or keep up with them, uh, or put up an image for. I, you know what I'm saying? I can't say that I have never been kind of like 
impacted by that uh, I have never felt like you know I have to have a certain appearance but you know I got past that kind of shit in my adult life real fast because other people ain't paying your bills you understand yes, sir. Yes, sir. I knew I had a college degree I actually had a job but I needed some extra funds and so oh, yes, I, I just went out and got another job yes sir yes sir I mean a lot of people they think they think they go to college and then they and they get out of college and they think they just start turning over they think they just start making money after that talk about that process when you got out of college I know you said your father was like yeah I mean that was in high school we said your father was around 18 so tell yeah me what, what, what was going on what was going on around in your college like when you graduate college that after what was the first steps after that I'm gonna tell you something this is the thing man um, when I came home from the Marine Corps I was home from the Marine Corps for about uh, uh, three weeks. After three weeks, I stopped in D.C. for a bit. It hung out with my cousin at Howard, oh, wow. <laughs> right? Yes, and then I came back, and a couple weeks later, I started working at the Windsor Court Hotel. And I still remember, man. I wanted a, one of them jobs as a, a bellman or a job where you made a lot of tips. You know what I'm saying? But they actually put me in housekeeping. Meaning, like, I had to sweep floors and pull back beds and wash the sheets and do shit like that, right? And I still remember, man, like, looking at that hotel window from the 22nd floor and looking downtown New Orleans. And at the time, people, business people used to have little briefcases, you know, yeah, yeah, and yeah. seeing people with suits and briefcases look like they were doing shit. And I had a mop in my hand. I could just remember, you know, I didn't say, hell, I can't do this. I ain't going to do this. I, yeah, I'm going to do this. But I told myself, this is not going to be the end for me. Mm-hmm. Hell no. You know, I'm not going to be holding this fucking mop in, 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 in 20 years. You know, I'm going to do, I got, there's some other things I want to do. And so, you know, I, I, I went back to college and, and it started. And, and I'm telling you, I think most of the, the good things that's happened to me in my life is just, you know, just being willing to work hard. Okay, I understand, sir. I understand what, what were what, what I mean I mean it's kind of let me give you, let me give you a more lighthearted question mm-hmm. as a business owner in today's what what is your sleep sleep schedule like? Well, you know I have a performance venue, mm-hmm. and and so I could have something that happens anytime, you know. And we live, we're in New Orleans, and you know they got a lot of places where two o'clock is the cutoff time. But I could have I've had stuff that might might end seven o'clock the next morning, <laughs> you know. So, no, that doesn't happen a lot these days, at least not my club. There are a couple clubs in New Orleans where it does happen, not here, but occasionally it happens. And so it just depends on whatever's happening. It just depends on when it's happening. Okay, I understand. Right. But I got to say this much. Probably before the pandemic, man, I was probably averaging three, four hours of sleep a night. That's it. That's not good. And I had high blood pressure, you know, and I used to literally say I sleep when I'm dead. But then as I got older, I realized if you don't sleep, you're probably going to die, <laughs> right? But, but the pandemic taught me that because before, if I got home at 4 in the morning and my eyes open at 6.30, I was up. I was gone. But the pandemic just taught me your eyes could open, but just lay there, stay right where you at, <laughs> and they'll close again. <laughs> so, so since the pandemic, I've been, I've been sleeping well, man. That's great. I mean, a lot of people don't, even my generation, don't understand the importance of a good sleep schedule. Yeah, man. You really turn yourself crazy. You can get away with it a little bit when you're your age. It probably isn't healthy, but when you get to where I am, it, it ain't that much of a choice anymore. You got to sleep. <laughs> I understand, sir. Um, what, what was, so your first, this was your first business? This was, well, you know, I tried to, me and my cousin Troy Gant, we tried to open a restaurant as soon as I graduated from college. Mm-hmm. But that didn't work. That didn't work because I was I, I wasn't in, in town. My cousin he was handling the business, and it, we we made an attempt at it. I almost shouldn't even I should forget that that ever happened. <laughs> but but that was my first shot at okay. at, a, at trying to open a business. Okay, um, a lot of a lot of business people they it's, it's a, like different mindsets. A lot of people feel differently about getting getting loans and like getting investors. What is your opinion on that? I say that it depends on the person and it depends on your situation, mm-hmm. right? Now, of course, if you could open a business without having to take out a loan, then do that, right? But not everybody have the money where they could just say, hey, I got the money put aside to, 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 uh, to start this business. And if you don't, and there's a way that you can get a loan, then, then do it. You don't bet on yourself. Yes, sir. 
Um, what is what is your what is your day to day like? What is your daily routine as a business? Owner? Well, I have a, a unique kind of business here, man, and it's 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 wild, bro. I don't think they got a lot of businesses like this in the country because it's a performance space, and somehow I could tap into the entire demographic pool of New Orleans, and so you could come here and and see literally anything black white straight gay young old hispanic whatever it's like the whole world comes 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 comes, comes like right here and uh, and so it 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 varies from day to day now that has pros and cons and the con the negative is that my cl my club is not branded a certain way and so as a re it's not branded a certain way and it's risky to just show up here because you never know what it's going to be you, it could be your shit or it could be something like a on the other side of the planet from what you used to do and you know and so that's the negative we're not branded a certain way and and so we don't have a lot of just walk up traffic but the one of the beautiful things is that man, i don't ever get bored because it's it's everything's always changing it's different people doing different shit wow what is now what is your what is your experience what is your experience i mean of course to you obviously it's, it's probably more it's probably more like you're probably used to this you grew up here and everything what is the experience um dealing dealing with her what is something what is a problem that you see yourself occurring reoccurring a lot you know i was telling this to my daughter the other day you know when i first opened i had a lot more like like some shit to come up like people might try to test you or something like that you know mm -hmm. And, 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 and that happened a few times around when we, first, when we first opened. I was saying to myself, God damn, I guess when you have a club, this is the kind of shit you have to deal with, right? But I think I could be wrong. You know, I've been open now for a while, and, like, I have a certain reputation, you know, meaning that I'm going to be fair. I ain't going to let you play with me, and I ain't going to play with you either now. You understand what I'm saying? And so I think, like, the word is, is kind of, like, out. And so when people come here, I respect them. And, and I respect them and, and they respect me as well, you know, and so I don't have I don't have a whole a lot of issues. You know, okay, you know? Now, now, I, now I do have to say this sometimes some of my sisters, especially <laughs> like <laughs> from, from where I'm from, you know what I'm saying? They, you know, sometimes they want to order a drink and it might they want like a, a, a strawberry Hennessy like margarita or some shit like that. Right. Oh, yeah. So it's got a lot of different stuff in there. And then they'd be pissed off because they don't taste the alcohol. Oh, <laughs> so oh. I said, don't put all that all all that Kool Aid and stuff in there. Maybe you could taste the alcohol. Oh, so, but but the it's thing okay. is, is that when the people come, I kind of I expect it already. I know that's the kind of stuff I'm gonna get. Mm -hmm. And I got a thing hanging up on my wall by Nina Simone. It's a big. I can, I'll let you take a picture of it if you want. It says, I have to be more patient with my people with suffering like 400 years of, <laughs> of rape, murder, genocide. You know, so just yes, be more patient. So every day I walk in my office, Nina Simone is reminding me of that. Wow, that's, that's <laughs> big. That's big. That's a lot. Tell, um, like you said, you've encountered a lot of different type of problems. Tell me about um, any crazy bar stories that you had to that you had to deal with. Oh, I tell you this fun one funny story, man. Like the only time since I've been open that I picked up the phone and called the police in 14 years. One time, there was a guy, a guy, a, a young brother came and said, "Man, look, you should get your security." This guy tried to push a girl in the bathroom, and they were having like a lingerie party, right? Mm -hmm. I was pissed. I was like, police, come over here right now. I told him what happened. Wow. And so I go outside. I see the dude across the street, right? I said, you know, because I ain't going with the non-snitching. When the police come, they is right there. You know? <laughs> so I went out because I want to see what this dude, what, what he, how he's dressed. I want to see what direction he's walking in. Mm -hmm. So then he came back on this side. Mm -hmm. And when he came back on this side, he wanted to go. He wanted to come back inside. And so I said, look, bro, you can't come back inside. He came in anyway. I tackled him. Tackled him? Yes, from behind. Boom. We don't have to make this a race. What, what, this <laughs> it, was a, it was a brother. It was a brother. And to be honest with you, to be fair, I'm going to say, unfortunately, because at the time I didn't know, I think he was probably a little bit off. Mm. You know what I'm. You know what I'm saying. And if I would have known that, I would have dealt with the whole thing differently from the beginning, right? But I didn't know that. I was just pissed because this girl was traumatized, right? Mm. And so I tackled him, and I and I and I and I and I hit him with a nice little combination. Bam, 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 bam. Right? Four piece? <laughs> huh? Four piece? Yes. <laughs> then I was going for the kill shot. Mm. You know, like oh, the <laughs> like that, right? 
But but again, I'm in my fucking fifties now. In August, I'll be fifty nine, okay. and I pull my damn hamstring. <laughs> Okay, and man. it wasn't a little tweak. <laughs> it was like, ah. <laughs> now I tell people all the time, I ain't get an ass whipping since I left this neighborhood, <laughs> and I ain't get too many back there. You know, you could probably count them on one hand. Uh-huh. If that little dude would have knew how injured I was, mm. boo, yeah. he probably could have got me. <laughs> all I was gonna do was just grab his ass and choke him, but wow. yeah, yeah, that so that was the little funny story, right? Yeah, wow, that's that's crazy. I couldn't imagine like me myself. I couldn't imagine going through that. Um, do, do you looking at yourself now? Do you think do you think your twenty one year old self will see what you're doing now? Man, if my twenty one year old no, if, and if and if he could, boy, I would, because I've been having a ball, man. You mm-hmm. know, um, no, I could I never imagine that I would be enjoying myself wow. this much. And let me say this much. I, I often use this analogy. You know, we need, when we die, we need people to tend to our bodies. Mm-hmm. And they're morticians, right? Okay. It, and it's the one thing that's unfortunate for them is that every day they go to work, they see families when they're at their lowest point. And they have to learn how to deal with that, you know? Okay. Because it, it's, it's gonna happen. Somebody just lost a mother, a father, a son, a daughter, someone. And, and so every day they deal with families who are in that state. But I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum. And it's a skewed reality as well, you know? Mm-hmm. But every day I come to work, it's like some form of celebration, you know? And I get to participate in that That's the, every that's day. That's the perfect work environment for anybody. Yeah, man. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I feel fortunate about that, man. That's why I say my 21 year old self would have loved it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Love knowing that that was what the thing was going to be. That's what I was going to be doing, you know? Um, when, when was the last time you were in a, you, you were in a um, high pressure situation business wise? Mm, anything. Well, I, I mean, you know, we have high pressure situations where, you know, we, we, where the, pl- the club is just completely packed. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, the, the bar is, it's like four or five, six people deep, you know? I feel kind of a lot of pressure a lot of pressure that way um and, and 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 i guess maybe when i was buying my business partner out and i had to refinance this loan i have and mm-hmm. and going through all of that you know um you, you know that that kind of stuff could be a little stressful okay. but uh you know the fact that now i get to be my own boss mm-hmm. i ain't really tripping about a whole lot of stuff man now i want you to be your own boss that's somebody that a lot of a lot of my audience strive to be um what are some as as you are as you as being your own boss what are some of the pros and cons that you would say to being your own boss your own personal like not just well 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 the 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 the, the, the cons is that you know when the bill shows up and you know they say the compressor on the ac thing is 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 out and it's it is 7500 to get a new one 7500 <laughs> then you ain't got nobody else to call you you know you got to you got to deal with that but but the 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 the, 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 the pros the good thing is that you know, man, when the, when I had those corporate jobs, we they were always downsizing. Uh, you know, they were always going in a different direction, and there was so many times you had to go and sit by the phone and wait. You know, you got a you got a mortgage, you got a car note, you got a wife, you got kids, you got you got you got school tuitions, you got all of this shit, right? And but you got to wait by the phone to see if you have a job. And now, you know, I ain't got to do no shit like that. You understand? I got to tell you this funny story. One time. When we first saw JD, what's up, baby? <laughs> yeah, it's real. No, it's a little interview. I'm, I'm almost done. It's a, so, 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 get this. I tell people all the time. I'm the. I promoted myself the head janitor, right? Mm-hmm. Like I told you earlier, because I don't mind doing all of that kind of stuff. So, boy, we just opened and shit was tight, you know. So I was really mopping and sweeping and doing all that. And they had some people from the French Quarter, mm-hmm. um, the, the the French Quarter Neighborhood Association had a, um, a neighborhood association meeting and they were, they were having it here right and so there were these two well-dressed um like middle-aged white women who walked in mm-hmm. and uh say so yeah, there was like this cafe yes yeah, this cafe is simple welcome you should grab a seat you know make yourself at home and um the meeting let's say it's supposed to start at six it's five o'clock you welcome to come in and sit down right okay. so they came in but at the time i'm mobbing and shit 
and I got that Stevie Wonder songs in the key of life on, you know, oh, wow. and they doing, they doing, I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm mopping, getting ready for them, right? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden I heard this, uh, <clears throat> um, and I stopped, and I turned around and they said, uh, could you turn the music down? And I was like, uh, no. <laughs> if you can coexist with the music, you're welcome to stay. But if you can't, you're going to have to go outside and wait. Wow. <laughs> so I was like, that's one for all the brothers yes, <laughs> who sir. it ain't they shit. And they got the mop and somebody who come in at a time when they're not supposed to be there, infringing on that shit yes, and going to ask them to turn it. I said, um, no. <laughs> wow. That's so that's one of the benefits. Too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Um, as we come to as we come to a kind of an ending, what are some three to five key things to give to the young on uh, to give to the young audience, the young entrepreneurs trying to make that break that you did? Well, number one, being willing to work as hard as you've ever worked before, you know, don't be afraid of that, and don't be so much into the image and and just you 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 want that you want the, you want the image, but you don't want all of the the hard work that come along with that. Um, number two, you know, as a as a black business i don't ever want nobody to come here and be like oh man we try to do business with your boy <laughs> you know what i'm saying the, the floors wasn't clean he ain't get there until an hour after he was supposed to, all of that kind of stuff you know what i'm saying i want i'm try. i want people to have like a one service you know what i'm saying i want them to have i want i, I want the service they get here to be better than they than they are going to get you know someplace else and uh the other thing is you know don't be afraid to to to, to give it a try you, you you know what i'm saying and 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 here's one thing it wasn't so easy when i opened this place you know what i'm saying like i'm from new orleans i'm very well connected and so a lot of people would say well Damn, well, how come my shit ain't packed? The brother is hating on me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, or, it, it, you know, my shit should be more popping. I should be making more money, but my own people don't support me. See, I never said that. Never, never, never. I have never complained about that. I always said that if people aren't here, it's because I'm not giving them what they want. You understand, you understand you understand what I'm saying? It's like I'm not saying, well, hey, like I'm a brother and my place don't have a certain vibe, a certain style, I don't have that certain thing that you're looking for, but you should come anyway. Don't don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Okay. If 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 it if, if you open the doors and they, it don't pop right off, then think about okay, well, what are you doing wrong? Is there something something you can do better with the drinks? Uh, maybe you need to put some artwork on a wall or is this think about what it is you could do to give the people what you want because you know what? When you give them that, they come in. Yes, sir. You know, like sometimes we say black folk don't, su don't support black folk. Now, they got a little brother right up the street, um, the guy Larry Morrow. Okay. Now, he's somewhat of a concert promoter. He, you know, he does a lot of different stuff. So maybe to use him as an example is, a, is different. But that dude opened that place, opened a restaurant a, a, a block from here about five or six years ago. Wow. They've been in line out in the front of that place from the day it opened. You understand what I'm saying? So don't be coming, don't don't give yourself no easy way out and thinking about and think you ain't being supported because black people don't want to support you because you're black. That's bullshit. You know, if it ain't happening for you, maybe you just ain't you ain't giving them the thing they need just yet. Yes, and you just keep working on that instead of complaining yes, sir. and making excuses. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, a, a backhand question. I'm sorry, she's telling me to wrap it up. Okay. Another backhand question that I have um, for people that's opening up business that people have to come to, for people that's making products, what is some what are some things that they can have to capture this? Like, what do you say, say that again? Like, um, like how you have, a, like you have here, you have, you have home decors type thing like that. What are some things that um, they can have for that business that capture that? kind of capture the eye well you know it depends on where you are and who you and who and who your people are in fact it even depends on what what kind of crowd it is you, you 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 trying to attract you know what i'm saying and so one of the things i would suggest is find a place that's that's similar to what it is you're looking for and see what the vibe is you know what i'm saying and and, and maybe you could borrow a little something but you know just keep your eyes open move around try some stuff see see how it feels see how the people feel about it you know but but again if you got a whole lot of money you can pay somebody to 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 go out and get these answers for you but if you don't you're gonna have to work hard and you're gonna have to do some trial and error 
And by the way, by the way, it sounds from you explaining it, the hard work is the best part of it. That's the best part of it, my brother. Yes, sir. So I'm happy. I'm happy you sat down with me. This yeah, is a, this yeah is you're right. Thank you, brother. Um, this is the number one podcast on the Izzard. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you next week, and goodbye.